and welcome back to another edition of Veterans Forum. My name is Rebecca Jennings. I'm the Veterans Agent for the Town of Plainville and North Attleboro. Uh, today we have another guest that's going to come on and talk to about us about some great resources that her organization offers uh, to the homeless population and then folks that are at risk for being homeless, uh, al along with just a bunch of other resources they offer. Um, so welcome. Thank you. And your name is Kendra Lefenden? Lipany. Lipany. Thank you. <laughs> and you work at Father Bill's and Main Street as a rehousing coordinator. Yes. What exactly is that position hold? Well, first of all, tell me a little bit, how did you get involved with this organization? Um, Father Bill's and Mainspring is the largest homeless services provider in the South Shore. Um, I've worked there a little less than a year. Uh, before that, I worked at Pine Street Inn um, and various other homeless services organizations. For, for people that don't know what Pine Street Inn is, it's uh, one of our local uh, folks that help with shelter, right? Yeah, in Boston. In Boston. Yes. Um, so now I work for Father Bill's. Um, and um, I'm the rehousing coordinator, as you mentioned, so I work on several different grants um, doing homeless prevention and rapid rehousing, one of them being SSVF, which is Supportive Services for Veteran Families. Now, what made you decide that you wanted to go and work with this homeless population? Is this something that you've always been interested in? Yeah, I, I love doing this. It's it's really rewarding to kind of get to bring people from a low point into a really high point and see them really transform their lives and you know really do everything that they're capable of um, and just kind of hold their hand on their journey is a real real privilege I would agree um, we don't have um, a large population of homelessness here in North Attleboro but we've had folks that have been at risk uh, for being homeless or um, but we've had some great uh, organizations like Veterans Inc uh, and then also Veterans Transitional Housing both have already been on the show um, I believe last year to talk about what the programs that they offer there it's a similar programs but there's also different elements that are involved with it so I would agree it's definitely it's a great thing to be able to help these uh, folks that are going through some very difficult time um, and just kind of hand holding them through the whole process and that's kind of like what I do as a veterans agent is do a lot of uh, resources and referrals mm -hmm. and your organization uh, is a great avenue for uh, veterans agents across Massachusetts of course and you were telling me uh, earlier that you have been to how many veterans office? I have, we cover all of Norfolk and Plymouth County. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been to every VSO office in Norfolk and Plymouth County. Um, you know, we see them as really important resources and we, you know, are fortunate to work with many of them and, um, you know, hopefully as a team to get people, uh, you know, either prevent their homelessness or get them rehoused as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, so if you go onto your website, you have a mission statement uh, for Father Bills. Um, what is that mission statement? In a nutshell, it's basically just to end homelessness, um, that nobody should be homeless. Um, so we have a, a real continuum of services for everybody, um, but for veterans particularly. Um, and as I mentioned, ranges it ranges from preventing someone from ever coming to us, hopefully, um, or if we're not able to do that, to get them housed um, and whatever that might look like. Um, we ha we have two emergency shelters. In one is in Quincy, and the other one is in Brockton. Mm -hmm. um, within the shelters, we have a program called Worth. It stands for Working on Recovery Through Housing. Um, and in the Quincy shelter, that means that you get, uh, the veterans get their own separate dorm area. Um, in so, they, so they're not sharing, like sometimes some of the housing uh, shelters are like five people in a, in a room. In Brockton, it looks a lot like a barracks, I'm okay. told. 
Um, so it's a lot more than five. Um, <laughs> but uh, in Quincy, the veterans get their own separate dorm area. Um, if you're in the WORTH program in either Quincy or Brockton, you get a case manager who works with you intensely to um, kind of throw everything we got at you to get you out of the shelter as soon as possible. Now, what's the average stay there at uh, these short-term shelters? I'm assuming they're short-term shelters, right? The goal is absolutely for them to be short-term and emergencies. Um, everyone is really different based on their situation and certain people have more barriers than others. Um, so it's kind of a question I can't answer as far yeah. as how, what the average stay is because uh, it's really very, um, very client-centered depending on what their stay looks like. Um, but the, that is the goal is for everyone to be, yeah. be short, very short-term. Um, that is in the shelter. We also have um, transitional housing called uh, GPD or grant per diem and that's located in Brockton and you get your own efficiency apartment. Um, most of the, the veterans that are there are waiting for their VASH vouchers. Okay um, and what exactly is VASH vouchers? Because we gotta we gotta break it down to the audience so they understand. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do in the military or working with the military of veteran population. We kind of do a lot of acronyms. Yes, they love acronyms. So um, a VASH voucher is um, for, is a voucher, it's basically a Section 8 voucher um, given by the VA. It comes with case, man case management support um, and it's for homeless veterans. And that's just in Massachusetts? If we had a population, if we have folks in Rhode Island, would they be eligible for the VASH Vulture? Is it a federal or it a is. state? Or? It is federal, yes. Um, and also the grant per diem housing that I mentioned, um, we happen to have one, but there's other ones all over the state. Um, so if that how many How many apartments do you have of those? Um, that is in a single building in Brockton. Um, I believe it's about 15 units. Um, and the maximum stay is two years, but the staff loves to say, if you're doing everything you're supposed to, you will never be there for two years. Um, our goal is for people to have permanent housing. Um, so that is grant per diem. Also, uh, if you come to us and you have enough income to support a market rate unit, you might work with my team on SSVF. Uh, so now, what is that? You gotta explain that. Supportive services for veteran families, also for individuals, they just call it veteran families. Um, and that we do homeless prevention, so if people are in arrears on their their rent or things like that, sometimes we can step in and help with that. To How about mortgages? No, we are no we, mortgages or no. Okay. Yeah, we are not allowed to help a home, homeowner, unfortunately. Um, but we can help with rental arrears, and also we do rapid rehousing, so startup costs for a new apartment, helping someone do so housing. So the first, search. last security deposit. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Um, if someone has a subsidy, uh, we can only pay their security, and there's other little rules like that. But as I mentioned, we try to be really client-centered, so we... Is this based on around income? Yes. Okay. You need to be under... To qualify for SSVF, you need to be under 30% of the area mean income, and that's something that you can kind of easily Google. It depends on the community um, and the household size. So um, for... Quincy, for example, it's a little bit higher than Brockton. It's, I believe it's 36.2. Um, but, um, as I mentioned, I'm the rehousing coordinator, so I oversee other programs in addition to SSVF. So the hope of that is that if we can't get you to fit into one box with eligibility, that maybe we can get you to fit into another. Um, our goal is really to, to help anybody ho however we can. Um, now, before we talk about some of the other programs, uh, you know, uh, Massachusetts has definitely vowed to end homelessness um, and they did that by really putting forth the financial uh, grants and monies into these programs that are available throughout Massachusetts. Um, now some of these folks face many challenges. Uh, can you go into some of just a general idea of uh, people, uh, why people become homeless? It really runs the gamut. Um, you know, I've seen people who, uh, we had a, a very wealthy businessman who uh, fell into a Ponzi scheme and lost all his money and needed us to help him get back on his feet. Um, you know, people oftentimes after divorce, uh, you know, will be told that they need to leave the house. 
um, and they have nowhere else to go and no family, so they'll come to us. Um, also, additionally, you know, often we have people who struggle with mental health or substance abuse, um, which also brings me to our permanent supported housing. Mm -hmm. So if, you th if someone is homeless um, and they have a disability, and are they're what the government considers chronically homeless? Disability through the VA or disability through Social Security? Uh, the definition or is very loose. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Um, so if someone has a disability and is what the government considers chronically homeless, um, they might qualify for our permanent supported housing. So we have uh, apartments, scattered site apartments in the community, as well as congregate living um, homes where people would have their own unit and then share uh, common space. We have like a kitchen or a living bathroom, room. Or yeah. okay, bathroom. We actually have several homes that are veteran specific and most of our properties have a veteran preference. So we have um, in Quincy, Hingham and Weymouth, we have homes that are exclusively for veterans. Um, so if so, that's another option kind of on our continuum of services. Um, if someone, if that would might be a good fit for someone um, who would, would benefit from that model of service. Yeah. Now, you were saying uh, uh, you definitely help the veterans. Now, what if they have a family of, they're a family of four and they're homeless and like, what, do they go into temporary shelter? Like, how does that work? So, um, we are fortunate we have uh, the WORTH program that I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. We actually have two beds dedicated to WORTH um, that are in our family shelter in Stoughton. So it's a wait list that's run by the VA. Um, but we're very fortunate that we can utilize that for families uh, while they're waiting for some other options. Sometimes it's utilizing SSVF, sometimes it's waiting for a VASH voucher. Um, so we have that to offer for families. Uh, but certainly we don't, you know, if there's children involved, we, we don't want to see anyone, you know, in a situation that's unsafe. So um, my team, the SSVF team, is at the Brockton VA walk-in clinic every Thursday from 1 to 3 in Building 7. Okay. Um, so if someone would like to talk about services, about what we have to offer, it's a really good opportunity because the VA social workers are there, the employment specialists are there, the VASH team is there, so we can kind of... Um, so it's a whole wraparound of exactly. services that are available. And what, what was the times again? It's at the Brockton VA in Building 7 every Thursday from 1 to 3. So you can just uh, walk in and uh, to learn about those services that are available. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and Vets Inc. is usually there as well, so um, if you're in Bristol County, Vets Inc. would service you, mm -hmm. um, and if you're in Plymouth or Norfolk County, it would be Father Bills and Mainspring. Yeah. Now, um, the uh, we were talking the earlier when we were uh, getting ready to come on the show. So you offer uh, also assistance with food and nutrition, job training, and other basic needs. Can you go into a little bit in detail about those services? So uh, we uh, we serve three meals a day, 365 days a year. Um, Is that in all of the facilities? At uh, both of our shelters. Okay. Um, we also have a drop-in lunch program. We do a bag lunch program. Um, so we have really amazing uh, food service team. Uh, we get wonderful don donations from the community. And um, we also have a food works program where the participants at the shelter and our housing programs, if they're interested, can come and train and learn about food service and working in a real kitchen. Really? Okay. So, like, kind of on the job uh, learning. Mm -hmm. And we have a pro also have a program called Work Express, which is um, like a social enterprise. Um, and we have contracts with the city of Brockton for graffiti removal, uh, landlords uh, to turn over apartments uh, when they have new tenants coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, they clean offices in the community, um, and that's geared towards participants who may not have, you know, may have a gap in work history. Um, to get know. some sort of uh, something on their resume mm -hmm. to be able to, to get them employed. And it's paid. And it is paid. Yes. That's good. That's a good, that's a good program. Um, 
Now, is there any other programs that uh, we hadn't talked about that you wanted to share? Um, we we have uh, we have a lot of family shelter programs. They're administered by DHCD. Um, Again, so what is that? The Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh -huh. um, so, unfortunately, if someone comes to our door, we couldn't immediately place them in family shelter because that all has to go through them. Um, but we do, we have a tremendous amount of resources. Um, and like I said, if we can't fit you in one box, we really want to find another one that we can, we can fit you in so that we can get you services and get you to not need us anymore. Now, if someone wanted to donate to your organization, let's say they really want to support you guys and what you're doing, your mission uh, with helping to hel uh, end homelessness, how can they be able to donate to you? Um, I would contact our development office um, and they could uh, give you more information about how to do that. But even if someone is just interested in donating their time. Um, so you're looking for volunteers too? Always. Okay. Always looking for volunteers. Um, we have church groups that come in and do nights uh, f and make meals in the kitchen. Uh, we have you know, like daisies and brownies come in and make bagged lunch for people. There's really a wide range of opportunities um, for people to, to help out and pitch to in. To be able to give out and give back. Absolutely. We also have a donation center that is in Brockton and we run a wish list on our website. Um, so things like um, is this to help folks that are get, getting into apartments? Both, uh, okay. as well as guests at the shelter. So okay. hygiene items are always in demand, uh, particularly uh, female hygiene items are always something that we need. But there's a, they update the wish list on the website frequently for things that we might be running out of or might be running low. So we certainly appreciate all the community support. So if somebody wanted to do a drive for you, you definitely Absolutely. would be... Uh, welcome that. Yes, yes. Now, does that include food, or is it like hygiene, or is it just, uh, it d depends? I would speak to our development office and see kind of where the need lies at the mo at the time that you're looking to participate, because um, we are fortunate that we have a lot of community support. Um, so, uh, you know, we might be okay on food for a while, but might need, you know, be running low on toothbrushes Toothpaste, and toothpaste or something. Deodorant and, and socks and stuff yeah. like that. And, um, now, you have a whole list of different positions that are available uh, that are open right and now in your organization. Um, and how would someone apply for these positions? Let's say would they want to come and work for the shelter, um, like doing it full time. Um, what types of positions are available um, and how do they go about doing it? Yeah, we, we are always looking for talent. Um, the, all the positions are posted on the website, and you can either apply through the website um, or we post on Indeed and Idealist and, we and websites like that as well. Um, we have different hours, different locations. We serve everywhere from Quincy down to Plymouth. So, um, you know, wherever you might be looking to work, we probably have an office that's pretty close to you. Um, and hopefully, you know, can, fi can match you to a position where your interests lie. So we also have many homelessness prevention programs. We have a team called TPP, or Tenancy Preservation Program. So we are in all of the housing courts in the South Shore. And what's a housing court? So if you get an eviction notice, um, you would go to housing court. So we have a great team that works out of all the areas in the South Shore that will go to court with you, advocate for you, know your tenant rights, work on hopefully preserving your tenancy, um, but they're connected to us. So ultimately, if that's not what we're able to accomplish um, or not what the tenant wants to accomplish, um, then we can work on hopefully rehousing you. Um, I also work on a program called ESG. Uh, which stands for Emergency Solutions Grant, um, mm -hmm. and that money does homeless prevention and rapid rehousing, which is similarly to SSVF. So if someone is behind on their rent and needs some help, then we, we can step in, access that funding, work through the court to negotiate with the landlord, you know, make a payment plan, 
get something in writing so that a payment plan to repay some of the back rearage mm -hmm. so that your tenancy is preserved um, and that your rights are protected uh, because there's so many things that that people don't know um, and sometimes they're just scared and don't even show up to court and that's the worst thing that you can do so uh, definitely if you are in that situation if you've gotten a 14-day notice a 30-day notice um, usually, usually the, it's a 30 day and then the 14, right? So the 30 day can be for a variety of reasons. The 14 day is usually for non-payment. Um, but as soon as you get that notice, um, you know, reach out to somebody, do something about it. There's a lot of community programs out there that can help. So certainly we want to prevent anyone from ever becoming homeless in the first place. Uh, so if we can do that, uh, tenancy preservation is certainly the way to go. Um, and also we have a variety of other programs as well. Good. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. I appreciate it. And thanks for uh, providing us with some great resources and information about homelessness, talking about, you know, uh, you know various reasons why people become homeless. Um, and as we talked about, it could be a numerous uh, um, reasons anywhere from you know, bad investments to substance abuse to mental health issues. Um, it really depends. Um, so many of us live paycheck to paycheck and, and could easily find us ourselves in that situation. And that's really what we try to remember when we work with people that, um, you know, everyone deserves respect and dignity. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can work together as a team to get you where you want to where you want to be. Absolutely. Um, and then the fact that you were able to come on and talk about all these different uh, programs that you have available, which really educated the office, the uh, audience. Uh, I don't think many folks know, uh, you know, all the great resources that you offer. Um, and again, so what's the what's your website? And are you on social media? We are on social media. Father Bill's in Mainspring on Facebook. I believe we have a Twitter, too. I don't follow that one, though. Um, I don't know how to Twitter. <laughs> I don't do that, yeah. Um, but the website is um, helpfbms.org. Okay, and we'll show that on the screen, too. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming on to the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And I will see you at the next show, at which we will highlight an organization about some resources that are helpful uh, to our veteran population here in North Attleboro and Plainville. Thank you.